So this is the transducer that I got off of Amazon and um, was $85. I've already had a transom mount paddle wheel, but it was really not working really good because of the turbulence back there at the back of the boat. I paired it up with uh, this Raymarine uh, display. I think it's an I-40 and uh, it just mounts right here. Had it in there for a while, but it was so irregular with the uh, turbulence on the back of the boat that I decided to go ahead and drill the hole, put the through hole transducer in and everything mounts up on the back here. The wire, same wires as the uh, transom mount one. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> and that's the uh, transducer itself slips down into the housing and um, I mounted it next to the uh, depth transducer. So the first thing that you need to do is determine the position that the transducer paddle wheel is going to be in and they say that you're not supposed to mount in front of the uh, depth transducer which is already built in here because it creates turbulence so and you don't want to put it behind it because then you get turbulence on the paddle wheel from that and it's pretty tight here you've got a fuel tank that's right up around in here and then you get all the engine parts and everything back in here uh, and you have to mount this actually it's going to be this part <clears throat> on a flat section so it has to be between here and here so that it'll set flat flush so what I've decided is they say to mount it side by side like this but then you're coming up on that angle right here so it's better I think to offset it just slightly so you can bring it in a little bit from this angle here and then just put it slightly behind the existing transducer. That way you've got smooth flow over the paddle wheel here. Um, <clears throat> and you're not disrupting, disrupting the flow over the depth transducer. One thing I want to mention is um, I didn't want to mount it back here behind the scoop for the ram fill, obviously, because it would be too turbulent. You can't really get up here because there's a gas tank and you wouldn't have enough room to drop the transducer down into its housing. Um, so here I've got uh, the blue tape. Anytime you want to drill gel coat, you got to put blue tape down to keep the gel coat from cracking and splintering and making a big mess. So you can kind of see I've put this just adjacent and slightly behind the depth transducer. Uh, I'm using the collar as a template because it's the same width as the base. So I can eyeball it and then put the drill two inch uh, hole saw drill bit uh, to get it started. <clears throat> All right, so I've taped the uh, collar in place to uh, guide the bit. And you're gonna do a I'm going to start it with this bit and then I'm going to switch over to a regular bit and go all the way through. That way if I screw up, if I hit metal or whatever's in there, I only have a small tiny hole to repair to begin with because I don't know the full construction internally.
So you can see here, we've got the drain plug, the depth transducer. Over on this side, we had the water scoop and the thing went forward so far that I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get the new transducer in uh, without interfering with the fuel tank. So you can see where the pilot hole came through right behind and adjacent to the sound, I mean the uh, depth transducer. And since I've drilled the pilot hole, I'm gonna take the drill down in there with the square bit, I mean the, the hole saw, and just kinda eyeball it and see how it fits in there before I finish. So, it looks like it's gonna work. There's enough space. Put um, actually this gasket is the same size as the transducer's collar on the top so we put that around the hole there to see it's gonna be there's gonna be enough spacing um, to not interfere with the other transducer collar I've got the hole saw in the pilot hole and I'm going to start by going down about an eighth to a quarter inch just to make sure that the um, hole saw when it comes up through from the bottom doesn't produce ragged edges. So I decided to put a mask on because <laughs> there was a lot of dust coming up. So anyway, we're through. There's just a little bit of ragged edge right there in the top. I'll carve it off with a, a knife, but uh, that gives you an idea how thick the hull is right there. So. The hull. So I'm going to vacuum that all out brush it clean so that I can put the sealant in and then the housing. So most people that I read online recommended the 4200 because it's actually removable. Some of it's not there. The other stuff is, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the 52 or 55 or something. Anyway, I'm going to use this and you put a 16th inch bead all the way around the housing and then up a quarter inch above where the threads go through the hole so that's what we're going to do and also coat the hole all right so we've got the housing in and uh oh, looks like i've still got some 
a little bit of mess up there. I'm gonna wipe that off, but uh, housing is in. You need to leave it for 24 hours while the sealant cures. Also make sure that the arrow right there is pointing toward the front of the boat, just like it is on the transducer for the depth. Um, anyway, 24 hours. You can mount the transducer down in there, put the grease on it, put it in. Wipe off the excess um, 4200 sealant um, and in 24 hours it'll be cured and ready to go. All right, so you got the housing done in there and you're gonna have to run the wire. So while you're waiting for it to cure, might as well run the wire. I've already got the floor out, obviously. Kind of funny, they could have put a bigger gas tank in this thing, but they didn't. And uh, also it would have been nice to have a center bilge, but I don't think I'm gonna do that today. Anyway, uh, the previous wiring <clears throat> I ran along here uh, from the back transom. I used to have a transom mount paddle wheel while it's still there. But anyway, I got to break all the zip ties from that. And then I'll take a, uh, oh, what are these things called? Fishing wire or something like that. Anyway, get them at Harbor Freight. I'll hook it up to the wiring up there and then drag it backwards through here and that way I can pull that new stuff. So that's what the display looks like there. It's got the speed and once again I think it says the I-40 Raymarine. Temperature, trip, and average, max, whatever. Main thing is the Centurion doesn't have the paddle wheel so if you're running on a river that has currents that change due to the tides. You're constantly trying to do the uh, mental math and it's not a big deal, but every day is different. You've got slack tide for no current. You've got one to four miles an hour that I've seen out there. So um, this way you just glance at it, hit your paddles to go up or down. And then if you're at the lake, you just use your GPS setting. So anyway, hope this video helped you.